Hello guys, Survival Tech Nord here. Today we're going to be putting together an EDC power module for our communications and electronics. Primary goal is going to be to power up our handy talkies and secondary goal, and the one that's important for me, is to power up and charge the FT817ND. But rock and roll, let's get started. You are listening to the emergency broadcast systems this station broadcasts emergency news and official information on the air for a sign narrative. One of the most challenging questions we have to ask ourselves when putting together communications EDC is how we're going to power it without weighing us down. Well, I think I may have just solved that problem. This is the Anchor Astro Pro number 2. It's a part of Anchor's Pro series of external batteries. Now there's a few things that makes the Anchor Astro Pro 2 special and of interest to the radio operator. Getting the boring stuff out of the way first, there are three Power IQ USB ports. But then there are two additional ports, the first of which being a configurable 9 or 12 volt DC output, and the second being a 12 volt DC charging port. In this brief demonstration, you'll see that I'm actually charging up three devices at once with the Anchor Astro Pro 2. On USB ports, I've got the Samsung Galaxy S4 and the Countycom GP5 SSB. And on the DC output, I've got a Biofang UV82L charging in its dock. I'm also charging up the Anchor Astro Pro 2 at the same time. Now, no matter what technology we're talking about, we have to prove that it can actually solve a problem. One problem that we've talked a lot about on this channel is the lack of a DC charging port on Biofang radios. Well, the Anchor Astro Pro 2 is actually compatible with the 10 volt Biofang charging docks. And for you Yezu HT users out there, It'll charge up any of the VX series of radios, VX5, 6, 7, or 8. I haven't tested it with other Yezu radios yet, but I'm sure we'll get to that. For our tests with the Yezu FT817ND, we were able to achieve two things. First, recharge the internal AA batteries, which is a really cool thing. But most importantly, we were able to actually power the FT817 with the Anchor Astro Pro 2 as its primary power source. That was full power, 5 watts, transmit and receive. So let's be clear, this is not going to power your radios for days or weeks or months at a time on its own, but it's certainly going to provide you with the extra recharges and power that you need for short-term ops or emergency field communications. So finally, we have to put everything into a kit or a module. I started out by making a few cables that would allow me to interface the Anchor Astro Pro 2 with my radios, with my solar panel, and with my cigarette lighter plug in the car. On one side of the cable, I used power pole connectors, and on the other side, I used compatible connectors with the radios and devices I wanted to interface with. That's the Lego block approach we're always talking about on this channel. Finally, I mounted everything inside this Condor admin pouch that I had laying around to make the module complete. All right, some final thoughts. If you're gonna use the Anchor Astro Pro 2 as a basis for your power module, then there's a few things that you should know. Making your own cables, please test twice, solder once. I'm using power poles so that I can get interoperability between the different devices that I have. Radio, solar panel, chargers, cigarette lighter plug, things like that. Again, about making your own cables, please fuse both sides of your cables with micro fuses. If you want to solar charge your Anchor Astro Pro 2, you need a 1.2 amp panel minimum. Optimal is 2 amps. If I've missed something, just ask in the comments and I'll get back to you like I always do. If you've enjoyed this video, please leave a thumbs up. You're also welcome to leave a comment. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please become a subscriber. Rock and roll guys, thanks for watching.